So we have done the hypothesis testing, one sample test. Now we move to the two sample T test. So this is for the independent sample. So first I will give you some uh, basic introduction about the two sample T test. After we discuss how to calculate it, then we will discuss a bit the importance of the uh, few parameter that you use or few number that you use in the physical test. First is the sample size, and the second one is the variance, equal variance or unequal variance between two sample. Okay, for two sample t test, the command is still the same. If you use R, it's a t dot test square. Put your two sample. Okay. But there are some additional argument you can put in. Okay. You can set e equal variance or unequal variance. Equal sample size or unequal sample size. The outcome will be different. Maybe I'm going to give you a few examples. So the reason that we want to use two sample t tests for independent sample because we want to test is if there is there any uh, differences difference between two population, okay? And in the few lectures before this, you learn about that it's impossible for us to survey the whole population, the entire population. So if you want to compare the differences between two population, usually we just take sample from each of the population. And hopefully the sample is good enough for us to estimate the parameter of the population. Then we can use those parameter or those phase state that calculate from the sample to run the test to see if there are any differences, significant differences. So for example, this is a one of the research questions. So the question is, is there a difference between, uh, between, uh, the stu uh, between two programs? So this is a different program, okay? Student in terms of their body height. Okay. So just assume that this is a population, but in most cases, we don't know, eh? So these are the population. This is from this program, all the students, this is uh, all the students from this program. You can see the population size is different, doesn't matter okay, at this point. And for each student, so each of this number represent one student. Okay, then you measure the body height. Okay, so these are the population. Okay. So the thing that we are interested in, not the student, is the body height, the response variable. We want to compare if there are any differences in terms of the body height between the student from different programs. So if you remember the first thing first, you always set the hypothesis. You have not done the sampling yet, eh? Set the hypothesis first. But you have your research question already. This is how you imagine. If you remember when we discussed the population, I always emphasize that you have to be very sure which is your population. And make it very specific. Okay? So after that, you have, your you have your research question. You identify your population. Then you can start to formulate your hypothesis. Okay. So this is a statistical hypothesis for the parametric test. Okay. So this is two sample tests. So the population, the mean height of this population is equal to the mean height of the other population. And this is your alternative, it's unequal. So the second step, okay, this is the first step. The second step is to set the criteria, okay, the critical statistical value, okay. But before you can find the statistical value, as I showed you in the previous paper, you have to know your alpha first, you have to determine your alpha first, right? Then your alpha is depend on this one. So it's always good to make a curve, okay, depending on your alpha. So you might, you might don't, you, at this point of time, maybe you don't have the critical value yet, but you know this is what you're looking at, roughly. Okay, one tail or two tail test. You determine your alpha, you determine your test, one tail or two tail. Okay. Then the next thing is, you need to look for your critical value. So to look for the critical value for the t-test, this is what you need to do. So we discussed a bit in the last lectures. So first, this is how you should report your critical value, your test, critical test, your, the value for your test, for your current design. So first you have the alpha, 
This one is tail, one tail or two tail. And this is degree of freedom. Okay? So that's the reason why. So for the alpha, you can determine it, okay, based on your research questions. For the tail, you depend on your research questions also. For the V, it depends on the sample size, right? Okay? And in this case, you have two samples, sample one and sample two. Okay? So it's different from the one sample test, which you only have one sample. So the V is equal to N minus one, correct? Now you have two samples. So you have the V1 and V2, okay, for each sample, equal to M, uh, the sample size of first sample minus one. Then you have a V1. For V2, it's a sample size of a second sample minus one. Then you get a V2. Okay. After that, the V is equal to V1 plus V2. Just plus them together. Okay. Quite straightforward. So that means that. Starting once you have your research question, you set your hypothesis. The next thing you have to do, you have to think about your sample size, which can start to think about your experiment design. Okay, how many sample you want to take from the population? Okay, what's the sample size? How you going to do the sampling? So to do this, so now let's say if you know your sample size, your, then you calculate your v. Okay, so this is how you calculate the v. Okay, you have two sample, right? So the V1 is equal to N1 minus 1. V2 is equal to N2 minus 1. Okay? Then once you have determined your V, you can determine your number. And you have the alpha, one side or two side, then you can look for the critical value. Okay? Then you can look for the critical value. If the value is here, is this one, then you just put your number here. You just refer to the table. Okay. So this is a second step. So the third one is to perform the test. So this one is quite straightforward. You just follow the formula. <coughs> just have the formula, fill in all the number, and calculate. At the end of the day, what you know, what you want actually is the t. Your t, your calculated t. Okay, and this is your critical t. This is your critical t. Then you compare your calculator with the critical t. Okay. <coughs> so this is how the formula look like. Okay. So first you have to calculate the mean of your first sample. Right? The mean of your second sample. Then you have the sample size, right? N1 and N2. Correct? Okay. So the only thing that you don't you don't really have is the two sum of square. Okay. So for this one, you have to calculate by using this. Okay? So this is sum of square one and this is V V1. This is sum of square two, this is V2. So the sum of square actually is a variance, but before you divide by the n. Okay. If you still remember how to calculate the variance, you have your, you have your si, right? Okay. You have different observation. Then you have a list of value, correct? Then you put the mean here, si minus mean. Okay. Then you have the value here. And the next column you put, you square them, right? Okay. Then you also you just square this value. Then you have the order value here. What you need to do is just sum all the value. So the sum of square is this one. Okay. And for the variance is divide by n minus one for sample. But this in this case we just calculate the sum of square, correct? Then we divide by just plus the sum of square for sample one and you do the sample two. Okay, you get the sum of square, you plus them up, divide by V1 plus V2. Okay, so this is V. After that, you get the pool, uh, pool sum of square, and then just plug the, just put the number here. So this is the third step. So you formulate a hypothesis, set the criteria, get the critical statistical value, 
calculate the steady state, you get the test score. Okay, in this case, your test score is T. Okay, so the next thing you need to do is just compare the critical statistical value with the test score. Compare this one with this one. Okay, if your test score, this value, is larger than your critical T, then you will reject the null hypothesis. It's just as simple as that. So for this one, you set the criteria, right? Okay, this is your T distribution, and you also, the, this, in this case, is a two-tail test, and you also found your critical T. Let's say critical T is 2.51, let's say. And from here, you can define your critical region. This is your critical region. So the next thing you have to do is just to check your calculated T, this one, okay? If the calculated T, let's say calculated T is 2.81, then your calculated T is somewhere here, okay? In this case, you will reject the null hypothesis. If your calculated T is 2.3 something, it's somewhere here, then you will not reject the null hypothesis. And this is your null hypothesis. So the next one is to compare the T with the critical T. Just put them side by side. Then after that, just make a conclusion. Okay? After that, just make a conclusion. Okay. Whether you reject or not to reject the hy no hypothesis. Okay. So these are the example. So you just you can do it quickly. You just take your own time to do it. I think you can do that, okay? So just you need to get the critical T, okay? So now we talk a little bit more about the experiment design. So starting from now, from every statistical test, we talk about a little bit, discuss a bit about the experiment design for each of these tests. So in this case, we're sampling, how we sample the population, okay? So we know that we have two programs, so these are the population, okay? And then we take one sample for each group, okay, so these are the group, one group, two group, so we compare the difference between two group. Then you also need to mention, once you say you want to take one sample, then you have to mention what is your sample size. In this case, it's the observation or experiment, experimental unit. After you mention that you want to, your sample size consists of eight students, okay. Then after that, you have to mention your response variable you measure the body height from each student. If your, if your experiment unit is blood, so sample size is eight blocks, then you calculate the number of species for each block. Then your number of species is a response variable. Okay. So all these things is very important. You have to mention this in your material method. Okay. Each of these. Then after that, you say there's, there's one sample for each group, right? Okay. So it means you take one sample. You have two groups, so I have N1 and N2. Okay? And then sample size is 8, so N1 is 8, N2 is 8. So the degree of freedom is V1 is N1 minus 1, so it's 8 minus 1. V1 is 7. So the V2 is also 7. Okay? And your V is V1 plus V2, then is 14, okay? Okay? <coughs> so, just a guideline, if you are a beginner, it's good to have some guidelines, so, so that you will not miss out any of this important information when you describe your experimental design or your sampling design, okay? So, for example, when I mentioned two programs, that means that I compare two treatment or two natural grouping. In this, case, in this case, it's two groups, okay? Then I say one sample for each group, okay? So that means they only have one replicate for each population, okay? Replicate for the treatment, for the group, only one, okay? And I will, this is, you mentioned the sampling, okay? This is, this is where you discuss more how you're going to do the sampling, okay? Not from a statistical point of view, but it's, the, um, it's very specific, depending on your research. 
which sampling method they use, which check that you use, okay? And also, you're going to have an um, explain unit, okay? So each sample, how many explain unit student, okay? So the explain unit is also the replicate, but it's a replicate for your sample, okay? It's a replicate for your sample, for you, for you to estimate how good of the sample, okay? If you want to estimate how good of your uh, estimate of your sampling for the population, then you need a lot of a sample. Okay. Then the next one is the response variable, the body height measurement. Okay. So for sampling and the response variable, okay, you will discuss this in general first, the experiment design. Then after that, you go to the detail. Okay. For sampling, how are you going to do this? You're going to set up the pitfall trap, leave it for how many days? Okay. Then you do it for how many hours, for example? Then after that, you're going to mention how you're going to record the response variable. Okay. You're going to use uh, the ruler to measure the length of the leg for each of the beetles. Okay. So you should not miss them together. Describe the overall experiment design first, then I'll go into the detail. After that, you can find your, determine your alpha, the tail end of your test, one tail or two tail, calculate your V, then you can get your critical T. So you can do, use, do the calculation for this one. Maybe it take you 10 minutes. But before you do the calculation, remember, after you get the sample, you need to organize your data and summarize your data. Although I do not mention every time, but make sure you know this. Okay, this is before you run the statistical test. Okay, so from here you can see you can have some idea already. Is there any significant difference between these two sample? Okay. So after you explore your data, summarize your data in a in a form of graph, then you can start to do some statistical analysis. Okay. So if you use a software, then you use a software to produce a graph and also to do the calculation. So you just need to calculate the mean for each sample, sum or square for each sample, the n, v, then you can calculate the pool variance, just use these two values, okay? Right, just put here, then you can get this mean number, okay? After you get this number, you can just plug in the number here, okay? Move the mean just now to here, and then put the, the sample size, okay, for the first sample and the second sample. Okay. After you have solved all this number, then you get the T value. So these are the step by step, you have to show it clearly step by step. Then after that, you can compare the critical value with the test score and then conclude your test. Okay. So I calculate the critical T, so this is a critical T. Okay. So this is how you should report your statistical test. As T of okay, the value, the calculated value, is smaller or larger than this critical value, then the no hypothesis is rejected or not rejected. So this is when you do it manually. If you calculate by using software, you have to report the T value of your test, calculate T, your P value, and also your degree of freedom.